cardio MIMS is a game-changing technology. I think we have to remember that heart failure is an epidemic. And one of the commonest things that happens in heart failure is hospitalization. Hospitalization happens because patients start to retain fluid, they develop congestion and shortness of breath. Cardio MEMS is a way to directly measure how much fluid is on board or in a patient, allowing us to intervene before they develop symptoms of congestion and before they end up being hospitalized. It's a tiny little wire that's advanced into the patient's lungs and because of the way the wire is developed, it is permanently implanted into a, a distal branch of one of the arteries in the lungs and it stays there forever. There have been no complication rates to that. That monitor then, when you lie on a pillow, sends a signal to the pillow with a real-time exact measurement of what the pressures are like in the lungs. The changes in the pressure readings happen far in advance of when a patient may start to feel unwell. So traditionally, we've relied on the patient telling us, I'm more short of breath, I can't lie flat at night, my ankles are swollen, and by then, they're already retaining so much fluid that it can be a, it can require an admission to hospital in order to manage, and, and they're already down that path to a decompensation. But with the CardioMEMS device, we're seeing changes in their pressures, somewhere around the 25 to 30 day mark. So that many days earlier before they're actually having symptoms and getting into trouble. If you are a well heart failure patient, the benefit of this technology is probably very small because your symptoms are low and your chance of being hospitalized are very low. So we don't see implanting this in a sort of traditional well heart failure patient. Likewise, if you're truly critically ill with heart failure, uh, then this technology will not benefit you because you're unfortunately too far to the end of the spectrum to, to be helped. So what we're really looking for is a group of patients that are sick enough to benefit, but not so sick that the device can't change their outcome. We teach the patient how to take their readings. Patients are given a pillow, and that pillow is an antenna, and it's synced to their specific um, CardioMEMS device. And the patients will lie down on the pillow, and they are given a handheld device, a wand, that gives them some instructions. So they'll lie down on the pillow, and they'll take their readings with that. And so that data gets then transferred to a secure website and we have access to the website to be able to look at that information and see the actual numbers. The most exciting thing about how that patient is doing is that he hasn't been rehospitalized since the device was implanted. When we look at rehospitalization rates, they're at least 25% at three months and 50% at six months. The device was implanted in March and he's not been rehospitalized. His symptoms have been stabilized. We've had no emergency room visits. We've had no unexpected clinic visits because of a change in symptoms. So in him, the device is working exactly as it was meant to. We have a plan to try to implant approximately 25 devices in appropriately selected patients over the next six to nine months and we're doing a very detailed evaluation of the patients, the implant, the success and the challenges in order to actually provide that information uh, both to the Ontario Ministry and also to Health Canada. I think one of the amazing things about the Ted Rogers Centre and Peter Monk Cardiac Centre is our ability to engage with new technology uh, and to see how new technology changes the management of critically ill patients, so an incredible opportunity. The Rogers Centre also had the funding to be able to do this because the technology does carry a cost. We don't yet know what the cost will be if marketed and approved in Canada, but it is still expensive technology. We do know that at the end of the day, because of the reduction in hospitalization, 
it's cost effective because the cost of hospitalization is very high. So on balance, it appears to be cost effective technology in the US environment. We don't yet know that in Canada. But we've had an incredible gift and an opportunity to use that funding for this first in Canada uh, implant. There is no doubt that heart failure is, a, uh, is an incredibly challenging disease to manage. And it's a disease characterized by progression and anything that we can do to actually halt or reverse progression will have an incredible impact on patients in terms of quality of life and survival. And that has an impact on the caregivers and the family, etc. There will also be a benefit to the healthcare system because of the cost of heart failure. So anytime we have the opportunity to leverage and use a new technology that has those benefits, oh, it, it means the world.